Welcome to TV20 News, I'm Dan Monroe. It's another great day in Cleveland and here's what's happening. Prior to Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson delivering his State of the City address, I went out to talk to those coming to the event just to see what's on their mind about Mayor Jackson. I'm out here in front of Cleveland Public Auditorium where in a short bit Cleveland Mayor Frank G. Jackson will deliver his final State of the City address. I thought it'd be interesting to talk to some of the attendees to see what's on their mind about this address. Vicki Johnson remembers Mayor Jackson from when he started out as a councilman. I've known the mayor since he was councilman, then city council president, and then mayor, so I've known him a very long time. He's always been an advocate for education for Cleveland's youth, so I've grown up under that leadership, so he's been inspiring and really showed us what it means to be a servant to the community, to be truthful, honest, and always put the people first. John McDermott said he appreciates what the mayor has done for the city, especially during the pandemic. Well, uh, we're sad that he's leaving and he did so much for the city. Uh, I hope he has a very nice retirement and he uh, worked hard on the uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, crisis. And uh, he was a very, very good mayor and uh, we're sorry to see him leave. Jane Fumick. Former Director of Aging under Mayor Jackson has fond memories of working for the mayor and thanks him for being a strong supporter of Cleveland's senior population. I hope that he goes over the record of the many, many things that he has done for the city of Cleveland in the 16 years that he's been mayor. I had the pleasure of working as the Director of Aging for 10 years with Mayor Jackson and I will tell you we would not have a major senior transportation program for Cleveland seniors in this city if it wasn't for the work of Mayor Jackson. Edna Abkemeyer is just looking forward to hearing the mayor speak for the last time. Uh, I just, I'm a new homeowner in Cleveland and I just want to thank him for doing such a fabulous job for the city of Cleveland this last 16 years. I'm just really amazed. I'm from Cleveland, raised and born down on West 69th, Lower West Side uh, and, um, you know, been a part of the community, both of us, uh, all these years and just, I'm just really excited. I, I really have no expectations. I just, you know, I'm just going to see what's going to happen here and it's very exciting. One thing is certain. Everyone I spoke to is going to miss Mayor Frank Jackson. I hope he lives his life in health and wellness, that he does what's important to him, and that he not care what anyone thinks about what he does. <laughs> well, we'll all miss him and uh, hope that he has a very nice retirement. Just that he is happy in his retirement and uh, just uh, hopefully feels very accomplished for his, what he's done for the city of Cleveland. Job well done, Mayor. Well done. And you can watch Mayor Frank Jackson's State of the City Address right here on TV20 or anytime you want on the TV20 Cleveland YouTube page. Be sure to hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Taking a stand to end domestic violence in the city of Cleveland, the city's Public Safety Division of Police hosted its 7th annual Cleveland Says No More Breakfast at City Hall in the Rotunda. Good morning, folks. I would like to welcome you. Uh, to our Domestic Violence Awareness Month breakfast. This is very important to our community, very important to Northeast Ohio, and you, do, you guys do a great job in supporting it, and we appreciate that. And the only way we get things done here in Northeast Ohio is through partnerships. And the people in this room understand that, and that's why I appreciate you coming. One of the city's biggest partners for this initiative is the Cleveland Browns, and they have been there since the beginning. When I was talking with Cassandra, um, we were reflecting that it's been seven years since Cleveland Says No More kicked off, and seven years goes fast, and when you think of those seven years, uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't think about the victims of the last seven years, but then also those lives that we've changed in the last seven years that we've provided hope and promise to, and I think we can keep doing that. I know we will keep doing that, and for that, I, I really appreciate each and every one of you. Cleveland Says No More relies on resources from community partners to help victims in need. Our biggest resource that we have this year, and Journey has just launched a resource for the public, is housing. That's extremely important that if home is not safe for you, to make sure that you can get to a place where you can get new housing and safe housing. We also brought in and had on the back of our book Forbes House, which is in Lake County, who does the same thing in making sure women, men, and children are safe at home. 
And so it's been seven years. It's been phenomenal. Um, I, 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 I don't want to cry, so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm speaking. But it's been, it's been wonderful to see the outpouring of support across the city of Cleveland, and especially as a city employee, having your employer say yes to everything that you wanted to do. It's been phenomenal that no one has ever told me no during this month, and I am so grateful for that. The chiefs and officers of Cleveland's police headquarters joined together in prayer to celebrate the second annual Faith in Blue. I pray for their relationships and their families and the challenges that they're trying to navigate in their own personal life. God, would you show yourself faithful on their behalf? Pastor Noah Nickel of Lakewood's King's Church led the chiefs of Cleveland's police headquarters in prayer, shining some much needed assurance on the officers. When you have professions like police officers that get to see the best but also the worst side of humanity and some of the most tragic things, you can only imagine what it does to an individual's heart and their mind. So to be able to be here, to pray over them, to encourage, to love on them is a, is a huge honor. Faith in Blue is a national movement bringing together local law enforcement and faith leaders for community outreach and events, with last year seeing nearly 1,600 law enforcement agencies take part across the country. So all across the United States, faith leaders along with local law enforcement are coming together to not only just pray, but they're having events, they're having coffee with a cop, they're having coat giveaways in Detroit, and so they're doing great things with, within their communities. To memorialize this year's Faith in Blue, a commemorative coin was minted and handed out to officers. One side, the CPD logo, the other, a prayer. I wanted to be able to give every officer something. And so I found prayer coins and I brought it back to the office and gave it to Chief Wims. And next thing I know, he says, I wonder if we could put our logo on the coins. And so they checked around and we were able to have the coins commissioned and enough for every officer. And I just thought that was just so wonderful of him. As Martin Luther King Jr. once said, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. And for the officers of Cleveland Division of Police, a little faith went a long way. God, we thank you that you continue to lead them and guide them in all ways and in all, all capacities. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Can you believe Halloween is right around the corner? The city of Cleveland will observe trick-or-treat hours in neighborhoods throughout the city from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Sunday, October 31st. But on Friday, October 29th, from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., the city will host its annual Big City Boo celebration at all neighborhood resource and recreation centers. Parents and caregivers can bring children to their rec center to enjoy events, games, prizes, food, and treats. Big City Boo provides Cleveland youth with a safe and fun alternative to trick-or-treating. To ensure the safety of all attendees, each rec center will be staffed with off-duty police officers, police zone cars, and auxiliary police. Sounds like a lot of fun. I can't wait to check it out, and we'll be right back after this. Young brother, if you pick up this to settle a petty dispute or beef over a girl, a perceived diss or territory, there are only two places that you will end up in a six by eight foot hell hole known as a prison cell, or here, in a cemetery, in an even smaller kind of box, a coffin. Knowing how to pull a trigger doesn't make you a man, so don't settle your arguments with a gun. Talk it out, don't shoot it out, because your life matters. Cleveland Animal Care and Control and City Dogs Cleveland presents Barktober. The kennel is full and we need your help to find homes for our great dogs from our great city. Now through October 31st, adoption fees will be reduced to $21. Adoption counselors are ready and waiting to help you make a match. Whether you're looking for someone to join you on some hikes among the fall colors or someone to cozy up with at home as the weather gets cooler. For the last two weekends of October, City Dogs Cleveland will offer special walk-up adoption hours on Saturday and Sunday from noon to 4 p.m during which you can come and meet a new best friend without an appointment. Not able to adopt at this time? You can also donate online at tinyurl.com slash citydogswishlist. We will also have information available about volunteering. Don't want to wait and bypass the lines on our special adoption weekends? 
You can schedule an appointment anytime by completing our brief meet and greet form at tinyurl.com slash meetacitydog. For any questions, call City Dogs Cleveland at 216-664-3476 or email us at citydogs at city.cleveland.oh.us. City Council held its regular weekly meeting on October 11th. Here are a few of the highlights. Cleveland City Council approved legislation authorizing the city to enter into agreements with various agencies to provide food cards for low-income families. The efforts are paid for by council members' casino revenue funds, which are pools of money that each council member receives to help fund neighborhood projects and other services and programs. Ward 1 Councilman Joe Jones gave a share of his casino funds to the Famicos Foundation to purchase food cards for low and moderate income Cleveland residents. Councilman Mike Valencia gave to the Greater Collinwood Development Corporation for their purchase of food cards for low income residents. And Councilman Blaine Griffin gave to the Fairfax Renaissance Development Corporation also for the purchase of food cards for low and moderate income residents. Cleveland City Council approved legislation authorizing the Director of the Department of Public Works to enter into an agreement with Old Brooklyn Community Development Corporation for the Old Brooklyn Brighton Corridor placemaking project through the use of Council President Kevin Kelly's Ward 13 Council Revenue Funds. Brighton Park, formerly a landfill in Old Brooklyn that took years to remediate, recently opened. The Cleveland Metro Parks and other partners are planning various trails, including one that will run through the property from Pearl Road to West 21st Street, connecting on the Pearl Road side to the existing trail through Cleveland Metro Park Zoo and Brookside Reservation. Cleveland City Council approved legislation authorizing the Director of Public Health to accept a grant of more than $2.5 million from the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency for financial assistance for the operation of the Division of Air Quality and to perform air pollution control activities throughout Cleveland and Cuyahoga County as delegated by the Ohio EPA. Finally, Cleveland City Council introduced legislation authorizing the city to purchase trees, labor, and materials needed for forestry services, including planting trees and removing tree stumps and tree waste materials. The, the purchases authorized by this ordinance may be made through cooperative arrangements with other governmental agencies. The Director of Public Works may sign all documents that are necessary to make the purchases and may enter into one of the more contracts with the vendors selected through that cooperative process. The cost of the contract or contracts will be paid from various city funds and from proceeds from the sale of future bonds. For more information on these and other legislations, visit ClevelandCityCouncil.org. Welcome back to TV20 News. I'm Dan Monroe. October is Italian Heritage Month. Cleveland City Hall kicked off a month of celebrations with the annual Italian Heritage Awards Ceremony. Master of Ceremony for this year's Italian American Heritage Month opening ceremony was Pamela Durazio Dean, Director of the Italian American Museum of Cleveland. We are happy to be able to celebrate together in person this year in the beautiful Cleveland City Hall Rotunda. It is significant that we gather at Cleveland City Hall, which is the symbolic center of our community, and amongst the company of our community leaders. We have a fantastic program for you this evening, and we'll be recognizing six Italian-American honorees who contributed in numerous ways to making our community and this region a marvelous, thriving place to live and work. Ward 6 Councilman Blaine Griffin promised that even after his tenure as councilman ended, Italian heritage will always have a home in City Hall. Uh, when my good friend and colleague, Councilman Zone, uh, decided to move on from Cleveland City Council, uh, one of the acts that he made was that, Blaine, we wanted you to continue the Italian-American heritage. And it has truly been an honor to pick up the torch behind Councilman Matt Zone. Ward 8 Councilman Michael Polensic spoke on his long history with Cleveland and how Italian-Americans have their own history with the city. This has been my home away from home for 43 years. And I'm very, very aware of the fact that if we look at these magnificent rotunda and the pillars, that Italian craftsmen, 
stonecutters helped build Cleveland City Hall. We want to restress the fact that this is the people's home. This is our, our home away from home. We are so proud of the fact that the ethnic, racial, and religious mix and diversity we have in the city of Cleveland is something we need to cherish every day and be so appreciative. President of the Italian Sons and Daughters of America, Basil Russo, expressed his gratitude for the city of Cleveland and their hospitality. All of our Italian-American organizations believe that every racial and ethnic group in our country has made meaningful contributions to our collective culture for which each group has a right to be proud. We further believe that each group has the right to celebrate that heritage in an atmosphere of mutual respect. Six members of the Italian community were honored for their contributions to Cleveland. Gina Vernacci, Maxim's Pizza, Holly de Pompey Newbert, the Honorable John J. Russo, Vincent T. Lombardo, and Michael Filippelli. Be sure to catch the full Italian Heritage Awards ceremony right here on TV20 or anytime you want on the TV20 Cleveland YouTube page. Finally, award-winning jazz bassist Richie Goods made a special appearance at Shiloh Baptist Church to introduce students to jazz. We're trying to do some new things here at Shiloh Baptist Church. Um, we are bringing, tonight we have a concert called New Jazz for a New Generation, featuring Richie Goods and the Goods Project. <music> Is here um, through a grant through uh, through an organization called Jazz Roads, um, which is connected with many foundations, including the Mellon Foundation. But this particular concert is is seeking to bring jazz to underserved communities, and uh, so hence Shiloh being located in the heart of the central neighborhood, um, we wanted to bring this concert to this community. This concert is geared to students to introduce them to the genre and the beauty of jazz. Well, first of all, it's American music and it's black American music and it's part of our culture and our heritage as Americans and black Americans. And I think some people have a preconceived notion of jazz being like elevator music or background music. And there is jazz that is like that, but not all. There's a younger generation, like I have some young jazz, some young musicians with me today and when you hear them play, you realize they're on a, another, a new kind of jazz, you know, that is more accessible to, to younger people. Richie has his own brand of jazz that is fresh and funky, and his slogan is, this is not your father's jazz. I've studied the jazz of the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, Miles Davis, Charlie Parker, John Coltrane, and I love that music. And all of us in my band, we've studied that music. But now we want to take the music somewhere else and like I was saying, make it more accessible to, um, to young people, to black people, um, to um, the urban culture. Something people can bop their head to and, and just really feel. Music touches the soul of people. And so this is what part of when we say real and relevant ministry that matters. So we want to touch the community, we want to bless the community as an as a institution here. Richie also hopes to convert some adults who may not have an appreciation for jazz as well. In my band, we say a prayer before every concert we do and everything that our music be uplifting to people. And that's what we want to do with our music is uplift people and make people feel good. And I think this pandemic has shown that um, people need music in their lives. I think it's awesome that um, the Shiloh Baptist would have uh, a jazz group here. I think that's awesome. For more information on Richie Goods and the Goods Project, visit RichieGoods.com. TV20 is streaming live 24-7. Visit TV20Cleveland.com to see our live feed and more. Stay connected with TV20 wherever you go by liking and following us on Facebook and Twitter. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page to watch our numerous programs. The City of Cleveland is now releasing general news and real-time updates via their blog and social media site. Be sure to follow the City of Cleveland on Facebook and Twitter 
and subscribe to their blog at clecityhall.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Dan Monroe. Be sure to stay tuned for more on TV20. We are Cleveland.